Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna and today i will be teaching you the deep fascia of the leg so the deep fascia of the leg is going to divide your leg into three compartments the anterior the lateral and posterior all right also another characteristic feature is that it is thickened around the ankle joint to form retinacula so let's first discuss how these compartments are formed as you all know if i take a cross section of your leg or the cut section of your leg we can see that the lateral bone is the fibula and the medial bone is the tibia you can see it so the anterior border and the posterior border of the fibula consists of attachments of two septas we have all studied this before the anterior intermuscular septum and the posterior intermuscular septum this is a deep fascia okay so the deep fascia is going to be in the form of anterior intermuscular septum and the posterior intermuscular septum attached to the anterior and posterior borders of the fibula respectively then we have all if you all remember between the fibula and tibia lies an interosseous membrane all right because it lies between them forming a joint between them then this causes the entire leg to be divided into a anterior compartment a lateral compartment and a posterior compartment the posterior compartment is further divided by two septas into superficial and deep parts so these septas are, are going to run between tibia and fibula called the superficial and deep transverse facial septums this is the deep transverse facial septum this is the superficial transverse facial septum so this will also divide your posterior compartment into parts however today we're going to focus more on the anterior compartment the anterior compartment of the leg is going to contain the following contents now if you all remember i've talked about a mnemonic earlier and that is exact mnemonic we are going to use now these are the contents of the anterior compartment of the leg before we talk about these now let's talk about how the deep fascia is specialized to form the retinacula at the ankle joint this is similar to the wrist joint as you remember there was a flexor and extensor retinaculum similarly in your leg there are more retinaculas so in the anterior compartment at part of, in the part of your ankle joint lie the two retinaculas called the superior and the inferior extensor retinaculum so remember this is a special feature in your lower limb that everything that is anterior is the extensor compartment which is completely different in the upper limb so you should keep this in mind in the lateral compartment there are superior and inferior peroneal retinacula this we'll talk about when we talk about the lateral compartment and finally in the posterior compartment we have just one flexor retinaculum so today since we're going to talk about the anterior compartment of the leg we are going to discuss the extensor retinacula so extensor retinacula are superior and inferior lying around your ankle joint so what is the characteristic of these extensor retinaculum suppose this is your ankle joint all right and then your foot is going to start in your ankle joint you can see that there is going to be a superior extensor retinaculum and a inferior extensor retinaculum which is in the form of the shape of the y so you can see it is going to be in the shape of y the superior extensor retinaculum we all remember this is the lateral side this is the medial side hence the tibula's lower end comes here and tibia's lower end comes here so the malleoli are here so this is simple in the superior extensor retinaculum attachments are important so the medial attachment of the superior extensor retinaculum is simple lower part of the anterior border of the tibia and laterally lower part of the anterior border of the fibula if you remember there was a triangular area it was enclosing so the anterior margin of that triangular area is laterally giving attachment to the superior extensor retinaculum what about the inferior extensor retinaculum the inferior retinaculum is shaped y the stem of the y is attached to a bone of your ankle which is known as the calcaneum bone calcaneum bone because it is more lateral and the two bands of the y the upper band goes and attaches to the obviously the medial malleolus of the tibia and the lower band goes and blends with the plantar aponeurosis i've already talked about the plantar area it is the sole of the foot not the dorsum dorsum is anterior part so 
That is the attachment of your superior inferior extensor retinacula. Now let's go ahead and talk about the anterior compartment of the leg. The anterior compartment of the leg consists of the text added piece structures. What are these structures? Let's talk about the muscles first. The anterior compartment consists of the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis longus, now, in case of your leg, hallucis stands for or basically relates to the big toe. Then we have the ED, which is the extensor digitorum longus. And finally, we have the peroneus tertius. So, all of these muscles have a couple of similar features. All of these muscles are dorsi flexors. What does that mean? It means when you raise your toes anteriorly that is called dorsiflexion and all of the anterior compartment muscles are dorsiflexors all right and all of them are supplied by a similar nerve supply which is the deep peroneal nerve why the deep peroneal nerve because now let's talk about the vascular structures of anterior compartment and these are the a and d what are these the anterior tibial artery and the deep peroneal nerve now doesn't that make sense since the anterior compartment's main nerve is deep peroneal nerve hence it supplies all of these muscles all right so these are the contents of your anterior compartment we've talked about the muscles in the next video we will discuss the neurovascular bundle of the anterior compartment don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching